Today's theme is homes. Today we're going to read A House for Hermit Crab by Eric Carle. Time to move, said Hermit Crab, one day in January. I've grown too big for this little shell. He had felt safe and snug in his shell. But now it was too snug. Hermit Crab stepped out of the shell and onto the floor of the ocean. But it was frightening out in the open sea without a shell to hide in. What if a big fish comes along and attacks me, he thought. I must find a new house soon. Early in February, Hermit Crab found just the house he was looking for. It was a big shell and strong. He moved right in, wiggling and waggling about inside it to see how it felt. It felt just right. But it looked so, well, so plain, thought Hermit Crab. In March, Hermit Crab met some sea anemones. They swayed gently back and forth in the water. How beautiful you are, said Hermit Crab. Would one of you be willing to come and live on my house? It is so plain, it needs you. I'll come, whispered a small sea anemone. Gently, Hermit Crab picked it up with his claw and put it on his shell. In April, Hermit Crab passed a flock of starfish moving slowly along the seafloor. How handsome you are, said Hermit Crab. Would one of you be willing to decorate my house? I would, signaled a little sea star. Carefully, Hermit Crab picked it up with his claw and put it on his house. In May, Hermit Crab discovered some coral. They were hard, and didn't move. How pretty you are, said Hermit Crab. Would one of you be willing to help make my house more beautiful? I would, creaked a crusty coral. Gingerly, Hermit Crab picked it up with his claw and placed it on his shell. In June, Hermit Crab came to a group of snails crawling over a rock on the ocean floor. They grazed as they went, picking up algae and bits of debris, and leaving a neat path behind them. How tidy and hardworking you are, said Hermit Crab. Would one of you be willing to come and help clean my house? I would, offered one of the snails. Happily, Hermit Crab picked it up with his claw and placed it on his shell. In July, Hermit Crab came upon several sea urchins. They had sharp, prickly needles. How fierce you look, said Hermit Crab. Would one of you be willing to protect my house? I would, answered a spiky sea urchin. Gratefully, Hermit Crab picked it up with his claw and placed it near his shell. In August, Hermit Crab and his friends wandered into a forest of seaweed. It's so dark here, thought Hermit Crab. How dim it is, murmured the sea anemone. How gloomy it is, whispered the starfish. How murky it is, complained the coral. I can't see, said the snail. It's like nighttime, cried the sea urchin. In September, Hermit Crab spotted a school of lanternfish darting through the dark water. How bright you are, said Hermit Crab. 
would one of you be willing to light up our house? I would, replied one lantern fish, and it swam over near the shell. In October, Hermit Crab approached a pile of smooth pebbles. How sturdy you are, said Hermit Crab. Would you mind if I rearranged you? Not at all, answered the pebbles. Hermit Crab picked them up one by one with his claw and built a wall around his shell. Now my house is perfect, cheered Hermit Crab. But in November, Hermit Crab felt that his shell seemed a bit too small. Little by little over the year, Hermit Crab had grown. Soon he would have to find another bigger home. But he had come to love his friends, the sea anemone, the starfish, the coral, the sea urchin, the snail, the lantern fish, and even the smooth pebbles. They have been so good to me, thought Hermit Crab. They are like a family. How can I ever leave them? In December, a smaller Hermit Crab passed by. I have outgrown my shell, she said. Would you know of a place for me? I have outgrown my house too, answered Hermit Crab. I must move on. You are welcome to live here, but you must promise to be good to my friends. I promise, said the little crab. The following January, Hermit Crab stepped out and the little crab moved in. Couldn't stay in that little shell forever, said Hermit Crab as he waved goodbye. The ocean floor looked wider than he had remembered, but Hermit Crab wasn't afraid. Soon, he spied the perfect house, a big, empty shell. It looked, well, a little plain, but sponges, he thought, barnacles, clownfish, Sand dollars, electric eels. Oh, there are so many possibilities. I can't wait to get started. Thank you for reading with me today. It's puppy time. Today we'll be meeting some other animals that live in the ocean, such as the stickleback fish and the leaf fish from the book Mr. Seahorse by Eric Carl. This is a stickleback fish. It lives in the ocean. Isn't it beautiful? Can you think of other beautiful fish that live in the ocean? This is a leaf fish. They swim together in groups. Do you know what a group of fish is called? A school. Welcome to the world of Eric Carle. My name is Vicki. My name is Brooke. And our theme is inspired by Eric Carle's A House for Hermit Crab. This hermit crab carries its house on its back, which is its shell. 
and we are going to be making cardboard homes. So we're going to need a few supplies. We're going to need a lot of cardboard. Now we've already cut the cardboard into the shapes that we'll need. We've also already painted our cardboard in the style of Eric Carle. We're gonna need a few shapes to cut out. A square with a triangle on top. And that's gonna be where our front door is as well as where our backyard will be. And then we're going to need squares or rectangles. And this will be for the side of the house where we'll put windows and yeah. any greenery. And then for the roof, our roof is going to be a slightly longer rectangle to go right on top. Besides cardboard, we're going to need some markers and we're going to need some tape and we are going to need some glue. And last but not least, we need some tissue paper. Our tissue paper is painted in the style of Eric Carl, and it's already cut out into lots of different shapes. So let's get started on our house. Would you like to do the front and the back? Yep, I'll do the front Great. and the back. And I will do the side. So for the side, I think I want a big window and I'm going to grab, let's see, let's do this beautiful blue. For my door, I'm gonna do this yellow. Oh, I love that. I'm gonna draw a window pane. I'm gonna draw a doorknob with red. Love that. And uh, maybe there's some greenery around my window. And so not only do people live in houses, but animals live in houses, just like the hermit crab. You know, for example, bats live in caves and cows live in barns. Can you think of any animals that have homes? Well, I know an owl kind of lives in a tree. Yeah, an owl lives in the tree, exactly. That's perfect. So I've got my window, I've got some greenery, some maybe flowers growing. Maybe I'll use one of these squares because it looks a little bit like a flower. And again, you can cut out flower shapes if you want, or just be as imaginative as you'd like. You can also use your markers to draw things that you might not be able to cut out with tissue paper. Like you could draw a chimney or some birds hanging out on the top of the house. All right, now on this side, I think I'm gonna do another window, but maybe two small windows. Yeah, Shake it up a little do bit. A back door. Mm. Now, where is your back door leading to? Is it leading to, or to a backyard? I think I'm gonna do it leading to maybe like a tree house. A tree house, I love that idea. I'm gonna do a small bush right here in between my windows. Let's flip our pieces over so that it's the back of the cardboard. And now we're going to kind of do um, them in between. So we're gonna have the big piece here, smaller piece here, big piece here, smaller piece here. And now it is time to tape up our house. So again, you can always ask a grown-up for help if you're gonna use packing tape, or you could just use scotch tape. Okay, so I'll give you this piece. Can you put that in between your two pieces of cardboard? And you're gonna to wanna to make sure that your cardboard is right next to each other, so that way that they stay super, super close. That is excellent. And I'm gonna pass you another piece of tape. And we're almost done taping up our house. And I'll show you the trick to get them to stick all together. Okay, so let's lift up our house. Very good. And now we're gonna take one more piece of packing tape on this side. And then we're going to wrap our house around and tape it from the inside so that way we don't see the tape. All right, very good. Let's make a square. Excellent, that looks great. And then we're just going to tape our roof. So let me move this over and I'll have you tape it. I made my tape a little too long, so we are just going to flip it over a little bit. Perfect. Our roof is a little bit bigger than the sides just to make it super easy to plop on top just like that. And there is our house. That was a wonderful job, Brooke. Yeah. That's great. What's your favorite thing about this house? My favorite thing, I like how the, I like the roof as it like pulls it all together. I agree, very good. And you know what my favorite thing? 
is this lovely creative stacked uh, bushes right there. That's beautiful. It looks so good. This is so colorful. Well, we had so much fun, so much fun. and we hope you have fun at home too. We'll see you soon. Thanks for joining us today. Hope you had fun. See you next time.